What's going on, everybody? Happy Monday. I know that's not my normal uh, Monday thing, but uh, I'm trying to be a little less like Garfield the cat and a little more positive this year. You know, I'm awake, I'm alive, I'm breathing, I got a job to go to, I got a family, so we're just going to be positive. Mondays are not the end of the world. So, let's go ahead and take care of today's uh, business. We're going to get a video out and we're going to do a little bit of shell scripting. So, I want to try and keep this short, um, not too terribly long, because if you read my community post from last week, you'll know that uh, my computer took a spill thanks to one of my cats, and the screen's broken, and so it kind of flickers and cuts in and out, and while it's working right now, it doesn't mean it's going to be working for the whole time. So let's just go ahead and get into this. We're going to go ahead and launch a terminal, and we're going to zoom in a little bit here, and what we're going to be doing today is we are going to write a script, and it's not going to be a script you're going to want to keep. This is just kind of an example, give you an idea of how this works, but we're going to look at using flags in our scripts. So flags are pretty cool because they allow you to provide options for people if you don't want to have multiple scripts to do different things or present different outputs. If you just want to be able to streamline things a bit, they're just really useful to be able to have a little more... Um, options when it comes to your script and a little bit more, um, I don't know, usability, configurability. So let's go ahead and open Vim and we're going to Vim and we're going to create a script called, we'll just call it flag.sh. So we're in here and we're going to create flag.sh. And what we're going to do first is we're going to get a shebang. So let's go into insert mode and let's get our shebang going. Maybe if I can type, <laughs> there we go. Took me longer to do that than I would have typed about the shebang. But anyway, I've got my shebang up there now, user bin environment bash. And what we're going to do first is we are going to actually create our options portion of our script. And then we are going to create some functions that those options will call. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using the tool called get ops. Now, if you've never used get ops before, um, there is another system tool called get opt and without the S on the end. So if you do a man get opt, you can kind of get an idea of get ops and how it works by looking at that. Um, there is no man page, at least that I've seen, on get ops with the S on the end of it, but you can Google it and get some good information about it. So I highly recommend you check that out, but let's just go ahead and get back to what we were gonna do. So we're gonna start with a while loop. So we're gonna say while, and we're gonna say get opts, and then we're gonna make our options, we're just gonna make them A, B, and C. So our options are going to be A, B, and C in uh, single quotations. And then we're going to say option. And then while we're going to do, now we're going to have a case. So we're going to say case. And then in double quotes, we're going to have the options. And then we're going to say in, and we're going to start our case statements here. So we're going to say A, we're going to have option for the A flag. We're going to have an option for the B flag. And we're going to have an option for the C flag. And then once we're done with those, we are going to close off the case and we're going to done. And now we're going to go up here and we are going to give some functions. So as you can see, it just says while get ops, ABC, those are our options, option do. And then for the case in whatever flag you give, A, B, or C, we're going to run a function here. So let's go ahead and create those functions. And we're just going to do something simple that kind of gives us an idea how this works. So let's go ahead and create a function that shows us uh, memory. So we're going to have a function that's mem. So if you don't know how to do a function, you just type in the name of the function with open and closing parentheses, an opening squirrely brace, and then we're going to do the free command. And we are going to do dash H, which is human readable. We're going to pipe that into grep and we are going to look for mem. So all this is going to do is it's going to run the free command in human readable form. It's going to pipe that into grep and it's going to look for the man, the um, line that has mem on it. So then we're going to close that curly brace and that's our first function. Now we're going to create a function that shows us disk. So we're going to look up disk and again, opening and closing parentheses, opening curly brace, but this time we're going to run the uh, DF command. We're going to give it the dash lowercase t flag, which is for type. Um, you know, a uh, file system type, um, and we are going to give it BTRFS. Um, and so we'll look at any of my partitions that are BTRFS. And we're going to hit enter, we're going to close that curly brace, and we're going to go create a third um, function. And we're going to call that one sys. So this will just give us a look at kind of the overall stuff on our system in a pretty way, and then we'll just run NeoFetch. Um, again, like I said, this is not a script that is supposed to be kept around or anything like that. I mean, you can by all means if you think this is going to come in handy, but um, this is just to kind of give you an idea of how this works. 
So now we have our three functions up here. We have mem function that's going to show us our memory. We have disk function that's going to show us um, any partition that is BTRFS. And then we have the sys function that's going to run our neofetch command. Well, when we come back down here to this case statement, we have our case right here for A. So if we give it the A flag, we want it to run the mem command or the mem function. If we give it the B flag, we want it to run disk. And if we give it the C flag, we want it to run sys. And that is it. So we have our script here. We're going to escape. We're going to write and quit. And then um, we are going to actually ch mode plus x flag.sh and hit enter. And we should be good to go. Now, when I run this script, if I run it with no flags, flag.sh, it should do nothing, which it does. It just exits and gives us no information. But if I run it with the dash A flag, I should print out and show my mem or my memory. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And there we go. We can see my memory, 13 gigabytes and yada, yada, yada. So we have all that information. If we give it the B flag, it should give us our disk. And again, it should show us any partitions that are BTRFS on my system. And so we hit enter and we see the file system right here. My number two partition and my number three partition. Um, it shows percentage used and it's my root and my home directory. Those are my BTRFS file system um, partitions. Now, if we do C, it should print out NeoFetch for us. Let's clear the screen. But uh, when we run C, it should give us all the information that NeoFetch does. So let's go ahead and hit enter. We have the C flag, and now we get NeoFetch. So now we have one script that we can get memory from, we can get uh, disk info from, or we can get NeoFetch from, all by using a couple simple flags. So that's just kind of what I wanted to go over today. It's really kind of cool, and it really helps out with your scripts when you can really... Um, give the user more options to actually streamline what they're doing. Um, so it's it's really helpful and it's just something that's definitely work look, worth looking into if you are doing any type of shell scripting or interested in getting into shell scripting. Um, again, this is something I'm fairly new at as well. I do like to shell script. I goof around. I am by no means uh, proficient at it or a professional at it. Um, but as I learn this stuff, I really like to share it with you because it is definitely stuff that comes in handy and can help you um, become better at uh, what you're doing. And ultimately, overall, that's what we want, right? We want to become better at what we're doing on this stuff. So um, hopefully this helps you do that. Hopefully this kind of increases your knowledge a little bit. If not, um, I, again, hope this wasn't a waste of your time. I hope you at least enjoyed the video. But that being said, I'm going to cut out before my, before my screen decides to cut out. Um, and hopefully I get this thing repaired or replaced before too long and we can get back to some decent length videos and some decent information. So that being said, you guys have a great rest of your day, great rest of your week. Stay safe and God bless.